ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the hindustan zinc fourth quarter and full year fy 2024 earnings call as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during this conference please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to ms jala krastogi associate director investor relations thank you and over to you ma'am thanks doris a very good afternoon everyone i welcome you all to hindustan zinc's fourth quarter and full year ending 31st march 24 results briefing in this call we'll refer to qport fy24 investor presentation available on our company's website some of the information on this call may be forward looking in nature and is covered by the safe harbor language on second slide of the set presentation today on the call we have with us our ceo mr anup mishra and our cfo mr sandeep modi Mr Mishra will begin with an update on business performance while Mr Modi will walk you through financial performance after which we'll open the floor for questions I now request Mr Mishra to begin today's call over to you sir Thank you Jala a very good evening to one and all thank you for joining us for the fourth quarter and full year results briefing FY 2324 has indeed been a year of significant achievements for Hindustan Zinc characterized by high stever metal and silver production sharp reduction in cost and global best performance in esg this has been possible due to our efficient utilization of asset well planned mining and smelting talented team and resilience of our organization even amidst the challenging conditions of lme environment our company has not only preserved the thrive uh, marking another landmark year On this note I am elated to share that Hindustan Zinc after recording its highest ever silver production in FY24 has become the third largest silver producer globally making India proud Here it is imperative to note that all the accomplishments that I have outlined were made possible by a found on the foundation of safety excellence it gives me immense satisfaction to report six consecutive quarter of fatality free operation demonstrating our steadfast commitment to ensuring the safety and well-being of our employees with zero harm as a core tenant of our business and to prevent reoccurrence of similar incidents within the group we have launched programs like critical risk management and also started to overhaul infrastructure to ensure continuity of operation without any fatality our efforts in safety has been recognized by the british safety council international safety awards with multiple recognitions on sustainability front we have demonstrated remarkable global esg leadership by ranking first in the snp global corporate sustainability assessment during the year we have also a minus in water security and climate change by cdp as a result of decarbonization journey we are actively integrating lng and electric vehicles into our operations i am pleased to share that our renewable energy power delivery agreement is also progressing well and has been accelerated with first flow of power expected this month furthering on our vision of circular economy i am happy to announce that hindustan zinc has entered into mous with key innovative and technology partners dedicated to transforming waste into valuable resources thereby driving sustainable growth and innovation during the year we had also commissioned fumer plant at chanderia for recovery of metals from smelter residue these developments are contributing to our ongoing efforts to develop our recycling business further on diversity and inclusion we launched our flagship initiative inclusion during the year under this program we have onboarded 16 transgenders till date across various key functions while also providing an inclusive workplace through compulsory de and i awareness sessions for every employee these efforts were recognized at the prestigious third national transgender awards i am also pleased to share that hindustan zinc has been awarded the leadership in nature excellence award by confederation of indian industry at 14th cii national hr excellence award coming to our csr activities this year we have extended our footprint by covering over 3.3500 villages 
with 1.9 million beneficiaries under initiatives spanning across areas including but not limited to women empowerment, sustainable livelihood, skill development, health care and safety, sports, culture, etc. Moving on to markets, inflation persists in the U.S. services sector while Europe continues to contend with weak construction and manufacturing sectors but with expectations on interest rate cuts by the U.S. Fed coupled with geopolitical tensions between Iran and Israel, commodity prices have surged in April 24 with silver touching its highest in INR terms. The global manufacturing PMI entered expansion zone in February for the first time since August 22 and India is still the brightest spot among the major economies with its manufacturing PMI recording its 16 year high at 59.1 in March 2024. Global steel demand is forecast to grow in FY25 with India contributing the most with projected growth of 8.2%. During the quarter, zinc prices fell to an average of $2,450 per ton. Despite multiple suspensions and closures during the year, zinc prices have plunged by 25% year on year. Total zinc stocks rose to 386,000 tons at the end of March 24 as compared to 243,000 tons at the end of December 23 on account of subdued demand. However, in April, due to the rebound in global manufacturing activity, there has been a push in prices of all commodities and zinc prices have been on a rise due to supply disruptions and increased global demand. The domestic zinc consumption has grown by 20% year on year on the back of stronger PMI and is forecast to stay strong in line with the steel market. Coming to late, the prices averaged at $2,077 per ton during the quarter, down 2% sequentially and 3% year on year on account of softened demand and lower global automobile sales at the start of the calendar year. Moving forward with a budget focusing on infrastructure and additional spend on EV charging, etc., Indian lead market is expected to expand. Silver prices hovered around $23.3 per troy ounce during the quarter and $23.6 per troy ounce during the year, up 10% year on year. The prices have rallied lately, tracking the global prices, the, tracking the gold prices and market continues to look very strong. On silver demand, while current Indian industrial silver consumption is relatively lower, it is expected to increase significantly with developing industrial car uses like EVs and 5G, etc. The rally in prices and this momentum is a great start for the new financial year. Giving an update on the operational performance, I am pleased to restate that we have recorded highest ever mined metal production of 1,079 kT and refined metal production of 1,033 kT and silver production of 746 tons on the back of relentless efforts and collaborative ideas. We also have generated the highest ever sales in our value-added portfolio, about 20%. We produced these with zero fatality and at a zinc cost of only $1,117 per ton. These production figures grew at an industry-leading component annual growth rate of over 4% in the last five years, and the guidance for FY25 indicates a continuation of this trend. Our FY25 guidance for mined metal production is set at 1100 to 1125 kT. Refined metal production at 1075 to 1100 dollars per ton, 1100 kT, and sellable silver production of 750 to 775 Terms. On companies' reserve and resources, with an emphasis on ensuring the longevity of the mines through strategic exploration, we have managed to increase the total RNR by about 35% in last five years, putting in absolute terms our five-year ore production adds up to 65.1 million ton. We have added an ore of 118 million ton to the RNR through exploration. We have added metal reserves of 2.5 times as compared to FY20 on a net of production basis. Presently, at the end of FY24, our total RNR stands at 456.3 million ton with a total metal content of 30.8 million ton underpinning an overall mine life of 25 plus years. 
during the quarter in line with the national vision and with our strategic exploration objective to upgrade R&R, we incorporated in metal exploration services private limited a wholly owned subsidiary of HJL with an objective to explore discover develop and tap mineral resources coming to our expansion projects our 160000 tons per annum roster and 510000 tons per annum of fertilizer plant progress is on track. I am happy to share that during the quarter we have received regulatory approvals with respect to Bamnia Kalan mine which will be a new mine to be started by us and accordingly site activities will start operating soon. Once again on the guidance, please note that we are giving a guidance of mine metal production between 1100 to 1125,000 tons, refined metal production between 1075 to 1100,000 tons and sellable silver production between 750 to 775 tons. With this, I hand over the call to Sandeep for an update on the financial performance. Thank you, Mr. Mishra, and a very good afternoon, everyone. As Mr. Mishra already shared, it was a pivotal year marked by significant achievements in volume, cost management, project completion, and new growth path. Happy to share that zinc cost of production for the full year improved by 11%, US dollar 1117 per ton. During quarter four, company clocked a 12th quarter lowest cost of production at US dollar 1051 per metric ton. It was down 4% quarter in quarter and 13% YOY. It was supported by better grid, better linkage coal utilization, softened coal and input commodity prices, partly offset by lower asset realization. This quarter marked the fifth consecutive reduction in the cost of production with a commodity sustained reduction of the cost by US dollar 250 per ton. Despite the volatility in zinc prices, our financial performance demonstrated resilience as we adeptly sustained margins through agile navigation of market challenges. Silver production has been a standout success for the company during the year. With record high production positioning as the third largest silver producer worldwide, this achievement is worth highlighting once more by me. While I am going to give an overall picture of the financials of the company, I would like to start by sharing two key highlights demonstrating how ESG principles are integrated across various functions of the company, including the finance. Hindustan Zinc has been recognized by CXO Jenny for exemplary contribution in diversity, equity, equality, and inclusion with the finance domain. With a gender diversity of 50% in the finance function in the metal and mining company Hindustan Zinc, comprised of a professional with a background of CA, CMA, MBA graduates from esteemed institution. This award is a testimony of our progress in B and I. In line with the government focus on empowering the MSME sector, Hindustan Zinc has taken a lead and prioritized payments to its MSME vendors with an average payment cycle of 29 days during the quarter, which is 37% better than the statutory requirement. This underscores our sincere commitment towards ESG principle, bolstering trust in our supply chain partnership through enhanced social responsibility. Driving into our performance, the revenue from operation for the full year was approximately 29,000 crore, dying down 15% YOY. Even though we had better volume and silver prices and a strong dollar, revenue was largely impacted due to lower enemy. The revenue from operation for the quarter was 7,549 crore, 3% quarter on quarter up on account of higher zinc volume, partly offset by lower lead and silver volume and metal prices. Revenue for the quarter was down 11% YOY, though the zinc and silver volume were better along with the silver prices and the favorable exchanges, it was largely impacted by the lower metal prices and lead volume. The full year EBITDA stood at rupees 13,677 crore, down 22% YOY in line with the revenue partially offset by significant cost improvement for the quarter. The EBITDA was rupees 3,637 crore up 2% quarter on quarter and down 14% YOY. It is in line with the revenue from operation and again the good cost improvement. Please refer to EBITDA bid from slide 30 to 32 for more information. Consolidated net profit for the full year stood at 7,759 crore, though it was down 26% YOY. It is in line with the EBITDA partly offset by lower tax expenditure. As we move to new regime, our ETR remained 25% approximately. For the quarter, the consolidated net profit recorded was 2,038 crore, flat sequentially and down YOY in line with the EBITDA and tax expenditure. 
I wish to highlight here that despite the 25% YOI fall in zinc prices, we successfully maintain our industry leading margin of 47%, underscoring our strong foothold in the first decile of zinc mining cost curve. This year, we have issued a total dividend payout of Rs. 5,493 crore with a total contribution of 13,197 crore to the exchequer in the form of royalty and direct taxes and indirect taxes. On the back of strong liquidity with the healthy cash flow of Rs. 9,000 crore in the FI24, which is after the post-growth capex of uh, and RE investment of Rs. 1,200 crore approximately. It is also noteworthy to mention that we have recorded a seventh quarter highest domestic primary zinc market share at 80% during the quarter, backed by highest ever quarterly domestic sales. With recovering economies and brighter outlook for baseball metals, supplemented by our proficiency during the year gone by, we are geared towards pursuing our guidance of cost US dollar 1050 to 1100 per ton for FI25 and growth capex of US dollar 270 to 335 million dollar which will be mostly for roaster, fertilizer, RE power and the water making for while leveraging the market dynamic strategically. With this I conclude my comments and we open the floor for your question. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Amit Dixit from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening, everyone, and uh, thanks for taking my question, sir. I have a couple of questions. The first one is essentially on our uh, metals. So I look at the fine metal guidance, and if I compare it with this year, it's bit up between 4 to 6.5%. While your silver guidance is just 0.5 to 4%. So is it uh, fair to understand that we'll be targeting zinc over lead and silver this year? So, uh, you know, last year we uh, mostly operated our pyro facilities on uh, only lead mode. That helped us to increase lead production and also increase silver production. In a low uh, zinc price environment, that helped us. This time the zinc prices are looking up and we hope the price, the price rally continues while silver prices is also up. As of now, our strategy is to operate on zinc plus lead mode and hence the metal numbers are as high as you are looking at and corresponding growth in silver is not visible. However, you have to understand that even if I try to operate the whole year in lead plus zinc mode, only selectively producing that much of lead concentrate will not be feasible. So a balanced view has to be taken. Uh, if the situation uh, persists like this uh, zinc environment, we will stick to the guidance on metal and silver that we are giving, and that is the most practical guidance that is possible. Okay, but depending on the price movement, uh, I mean, uh, as the year flows by, uh, you can dynamically change it as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, understood, sir. The second question is on the exploration subsidiary. Uh, uh, I'm a little bit intrigued because we have a very rich history of exploration as, as uh, very well evidenced in our R&R. &R. Uh, so what's the rationale for floating a new subsidy? Is it that we are trying to go beyond uh, our zinc lead silver? Yeah, so the government is coming up in a new scheme that they would allow exploration companies to explore areas or blocks that they, they can earmark themselves. Now this is a new scheme and if we explore then government is going to return part of the expenditure. Uh, then uh, that data will be available to the uh, parent company for tomorrow to bid whenever they become uh, auctionable blocks. So uh, we being in that base metal and you know, deep seated mineral business, we feel that we have a, a larger chance, one, to succeed with exploration and second, use that data to bid uh, fruitfully in auctions and become, gather further leases. So we, so that's why uh, this is a new development and we are hopeful that this will help Indusanjing to grow beyond lead, zinc and silver. So does it extend to rare earth also? Is there any endeavor to go absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Rare earth, atomic minerals, all the critical minerals that the government has enlisted. 
got it got it thank you so much and all the best thank you thank you we have the next question from the line of ritesh shah from investec capital please go ahead yeah hi sir thanks for the opportunity sir first couple of questions on uh, the mining part uh, sir bamya kalan finally i think it, it has come to four uh so can you detail over here basically you indicated that we have secured the regulatory approvals uh so what sort of regulatory approvals we have uh how should we read into resource reserves we see uh and timelines on uh, the mining output over here so uh, so uh, yeah this sandeep here bamlia kanda mine has the almost 1 million ton of the resource in the metal term 700 ton of kind of the silver so that kind of it has annual potential revenue at current lme is 1000 crore plus and assume the ebitda margin kind of this uh, so maybe 400 crore so we have received all the approvals from the ibm for the mining plan consent to operate consent to uh, establishment everything has been received and now we have to hit the ground with the site activities and for which we are working with the business partners to start the portal and the initial mining activity and this is at the center of the sk mine so it's a strategically located near to the same mine so that benefit of scale we will also get uh, sir what are the timelines that we are looking at over here so it will be around any mine to start will it takes 1 to 2 years to get a full ramp up but i think to hit the ground and then start the portal it may be in the next year it may be coming to the main operation part okay uh, so my second question is uh, as per mmdr we will see a certain percentage of our reserves uh, face expiry by 2030 uh, if i memory serves me right i think it's uh, rampuru rampura agucha sk and kayad uh, so this three mines will be what so percentage of our agucha kayad javar agucha kayad is 2030 sk is 2048 bamnya kanda is 2035 uh, sir can you please come again a little slowly sorry I am saying SK mine has 2048. Bamnya Kanda is 20. Bamnya Kanda 2035. Right. Kaya is 2048. Kaya is 2048. And remaining mines are 2030. Zabar. Uh, so Rampura Agucha and basically Zabar is 2030. So this is what percentage of our mined output at this point in time? Which uh, Agucha and Zabar? Uh, 60, yes, Agucha and Java will be put together 65 percent. But in terms of profitability point of view, 50 percent, given that SK has the silver rich mine. Okay, and uh, sir, how do we see a scenario come 2030? Uh, given this, uh, we will probably look to retain the leases. So, how the royalty quantum can actually change? Very difficult to speak as of now. Okay. Because such kind of a decided mineral auction has not happened. That too on a brownfield. most of the options that have gone for are bulk mineral which are close to surface exploration uh, results can be easily verified so we'll wait uh, uh, no, as it happens but we know our scenarios we have already calculated and we know that we will be able to maintain our profitability close to the current level uh, even if in the option uh, we have to provide for a certain amount of extra premium okay and sir bamya kala you said 2035 right did i hear it right Yes, yes, you heard it right. Okay, perfect. So that's helpful, sir. A couple of questions on financials, sir. If you could please quantify what is the GR and RE numbers uh, as on March thirty first. So GR is uh, basically ten thousand three hundred eighty four crore rupee, and including GR and RE, it's the fifteen thousand crore. Okay, and sir, what is the status on GR to RE? I think there was an ongoing court case. Yeah, so GR to RE next date of hearing is seventeen May twenty four. So I think that should be the last hearing that we expect. So 17th of A24. Okay. Uh, uh, lastly, sir, uh, in the prior call you had indicated, I think we have also referenced it in one of our slides on uh, waste to basically uh, valuable resources. Uh, you had indicated one one of the American companies for a potential tie-up. Uh, is it possible if you could provide some technical color as well as some quantification on the scope of the opportunity that we are looking at over here? So we are not we so we will not be able to give the name of the company with whom we are going to tie, have tied up. But the quantification, if you see our slide number uh, on the sustainability, if you see the IR presentation slide number thirteen, 
where we have talked about the hindustan zinc has the potential of recovering 1 million ton of the metal and 3 kg of the silver from its accumulated waste stockpile this is the opportunity which we are total, talking total. total opportunity which we are talking and tieups are already done and we are in the pilot stage and at, at appropriate time uh, we will be able to comment upon the how much capex is involved here Uh, and sir, when we say one million ton of silver, we request you to please return to the queue if you have further questions. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We request you to please limit your questions to two questions per participant. You may rejoin the question queue if you have follow-up questions. The next question is from the line of Pallav Agarwal from Antique. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. Um, so uh, in this quarter, we had a sequential increase in interest costs. So. Uh, but I think you know you've probably generated cash, or maybe our borrowings have come down. So, any particular reason for that? The finance costs are in line with the, the debt, uh, and also the last quarter we have actually repaid the uh, low cost certain borrowings, and the certain borrowings have been there. So this is normal routine movement. And I think that is not a much larger impact of the cost increases there in case if you see from the finance cost, uh, it's a 243 to 262 crore rupees. Sure, sir. Also, sir, after after many years, we've seen you know reserves and resources uh, being stagnant compared to the previous year. So, normally we you know we do replace whatever we mine out, and and there's been an increasing trend in resource, reserves and resources. So, uh, so like, will we uh, will we increase our exploration activities this year, or how will this you know uh, pan out over the next few years? So, so overall, see, you see, know, reserve and resource may look stagnant, but you have to appreciate that how quickly we are converting more and more resource into reserve, so that our mining in the current level of 1 million ton plus metal in concentrate capacity at 7% grade and about 16 to 17 million ton ore mining is able to continue year after year. That is the first priority. And second priority, yes. Large part of Zawar is required for uh, you know, greenfield exploration. So our next con concentration of uh, uh, effort will be in Zawar, where currently we have moved up the ore production, and we want to take it to six million ton and then eight million ton on the current level of four, four and a half million tons of ore production. So for say eight million ton ore production, we would require a um, proven reserve of about 18 to 540 million ton. So we are working mostly in Zawar now to increase the reserve. And also add more to the resource. But however, you would appreciate that we have to do it in a very the judgment has to be taken rightly, so that we are in a position to continue mining. That is most important to us. We are able to control grade by enough of underground exploration. At the same time, we try to replenish a little bit more than what we uh, are consuming. Uh, unless if a new block we get, then of course we will have a sudden jump in reserve and resource based on the new block. And just Pallu, just to supplement Mr. Mishra. You, if you see bifurcating between resource to res resource and reserve separately, reserve has actually increased in spite of depletion by 0.3 million tons. Sure, sir. Uh, so, so, just lastly, on you know, uh, how do we like you know, distinguish between sustenance and growth capex? Because uh, you know, I think we, we probably have been maintaining about 300 to 400 million dollars of sustenance capex every year. So, uh, is this basically just to ensure the uh, continuity of output or? Uh, what are basically the distinction between these two? Majority of sustenance goes into equipment replacement because we have our 900 equipment in the underground and 900 equipment in the underground. At the same time, about say every year, about 100 to 200 equipment on a five-year life cycle basis, they are due for replacement. That is number one. Second, there are various aspects of environment and uh, safety which also requires investment. Like we are we are on a path to reduce our Fresh water consumption, and hence we are putting up water treatment plants everywhere. And then we are looking at sewage water treatment plants to protect ourselves from the inadequacy of rainfall in, in some years. Then third bit is we are also looking at small capexes, which give a quick payback, a less than 12 months kind of a payback that we include in sustenance. Whereas growth would typically have a higher um, capex outlay, say anywhere between say 300 and 400 crores kind of a project. Which increases the design capacity of the plant by not debottlenecking, but by adding new assets. At the same time, which you can expect a payback period of anywhere between 2.5 to 3 years. And those kind of criteria will apply for growth capex. So fertilizer plant and you know our new water, they would all qualify for growth capex. Whereas small small improvements, as I said, between 1.1 to 3 million ton and 1.2 million ton, will be unlocking through small small debottlenecking projects. 
but number of them with an investment for each one of them maybe somewhere between 5 crores to maybe about uh, 70 crores or 80 crores. Sure, sir. Thanks. So basically, we can expect this level of sustenance to continue in the future also. So this would be yeah. a steady state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a steady state. Right, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Kotari from Centrum Broking Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so one clarification of the uh, capacity expansion of uh, refined metal. Uh, uh, am, have I heard right that uh, current capacity is 1.123 million ton per annum and it will uh, be expanded to 1.5 million ton in next 18 months? No, 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 no. I didn't say that. We said 1.123 currently and we are launching a lot of debottling projects to take it to 1.25 million ton. But safely speaking, it will be close. It will be about 1.2 million ton in about 12 to 14 months, or maybe 16 months. Okay, okay. And uh, uh, our target is to uh, raise it to 1.5 million ton. So by when we can uh, say that uh, we can reach the target by which year that uh, that is feasible according to you? Uh, see, we are on the drawing board to actually, uh, we were earlier thinking of taking it in steps, maybe 1.2 million, 2.5 million ton in FY26, 1.35 million ton in FY27, but what we understand uh, is, is, is much better to plan for something like 2 million ton uh, metal in concentrate production as quickly possible. So we have, in the process of engaging uh, global consultants, we have placed order on two mining consultants already to look at the mine expansion. Uh, we are working on a order for a um, uh, smelter and infrastructure consultant this, so that we can come back to you and place before you a vision of making this company 2 million ton and we are keeping ourselves a timeline anywhere between two, uh, two and a half to three years time to take this company from 1 million ton to 2 million ton. After the designs are done, they will know whether it will be 2 million ton or, there, or it will be 1.7 million ton. That final number we will be able to project to you. Okay, got it. Uh, so my second question is in regard to our uh, new fertilizer plant. Uh, so can you state what is the capacity and business economics that we are looking forward and from oh. when it will contribute to our overall numbers as well? Of, of what? Fertilizer. Fertilizer plant. Yeah. Fertilizer is 5.1 lakh metric ton DAP and NPK and it has a project cost of around 1800 crore with a good uh, two double digit IRR. And uh, from the EBITDA, I think there are two, one, two strategic, one is a strategic objective or the forward integration of the asset usage and making it more sustainable. That is a one objective. From financial benefit uh, EBITDA point of view, it will be at current level of the prices, 350 to 400 crore rupees. And uh, uh, when uh, it is likely to get commission? FI26. FI26. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Velikar from Access Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. My question is on the guidance uh, which we have shared today. So if I compare it with the analyst pay presentation, we have given guidance of uh, 800 tons per annum for silver. Uh, but in today's presentation, it is now cut down to 775. And similarly for refined metal from 1200 to 1100 and zinc COP from $1,000 per ton to 11 to eleven hundred dollars per ton. So, so there is a slight deviation from the I think, mark. I think yeah. yeah. No 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 deviation at all. In analyst meet we did not give guidance for next year. We said that that is the potential and the vision for Hindustan Zinc and we said anywhere between three to four years timeline to come to those numbers. We said that the company has the potential to achieve up to say 1.5 million ton metal, has the potential to produce between 800 tons of silver, and also has the potential to become less than thousand dollars per ton of cost on the cost. So it's more from that angle. Whereas next year concerned, these are the guidance we have given. Of course, we still will continue to work towards going to thousand dollars per ton uh, cost of production. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. That's it from my side. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Vikas Singh from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. 
So I just wanted to understand one thing. If you look at our silver growth guidance of around two percent versus the refined metal guidance of five percent, uh, even with the fact that the fumer just contributed three ton out of the thirty ton potential, so why this fumer is not growing at all with refined oh. metal? As we said that we will be operating mostly in zinc plus lead mode in the pyro, so correspondingly our lead production will go down, and hence the attached silver production will go down. It is just because of the fumers that we are able to make up for that and still produce 750 to 775 tons of silver at this level of metal of 1.1 to 1.125. Otherwise, this number would have gone down to anywhere between 730 to 735 tons of silver only. Understood, sir. So, given zinc prices have jumped up significantly, with this our cash flow would also be increasing. So, our preference would be debt reduction, or this kind of debt we will maintain, and whatever the uh, additional money we would have, this can be distributed as a dividend going forward. So, what's our take on that? So, Sanjeev, uh, here I, I think a dividend is a matter for the board to comment. Uh, whenever it will come, we will all come to know. At this point of time, if I will have the cash, obviously I will either invest in the long-term investment where I I can get the best of the return, or in case there is an uh, option, we will uh, repay it. So I know I think I will be more concerned about the net cash level or net debt level rather than taking out the gross cash or gross CGI. Point taken, sir. So just one last thing. Uh, in just on from our under understanding purpose, sensitivity wise. How much five uh, percent uh, additional value-added sales would uh, move our EBITDA? If so you have value yeah, value-added production like zinc alloy, this is not from the EBITDA or pet point of view. This is more from the being the strategic and making India self-reliant. Like zinc alloy has the total market of 30 kT, and we have also put up the plant for 30 kT. So we want to reduce the import dependency. That is the more from that point of view. If you see the value addition from the zinc alloy, it will be 40, 50 crore. But I think you should not look from profitability point of view. Everything look at more from the holistic. How we make India self-reliant by making zinc alloy internally in India only. Understood, sir. Thank you. That's all from my side, and all the best for the future. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shweta Dixit from Systematics Group. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Sir, so, uh, for my understanding, uh, could you just throw some light on the uh, zinc plus lead mode of operations that you were talking about? Oh, so we have a pyro facility that furnace can run with. Input of zinc concentrate and lead concentrate mixed together and converted to sinter, and that sinter is fed to the furnace. After melting, we produce both zinc as a finished good, also lead as a finished good in that process, and balanced residue carries the silver that get that frees up from the lead, which is again taken to silver refinery plants and produces silver. Now, in this process, if I don't feed in zinc and only feed in lead. You can understand that then the furnace is full of lead. The furnace residue is full of lead residue with the silver, and then the, it can produce more silver. That is the very simplistic way of understanding. Understood, sir. Thank you. Uh, my next question is on the line uh, on uh, what's your outlook on uh, zinc prices in the near or medium term? Uh, zinc prices or... near and medium term. No, there are various there are various reports speak on something with the current uh, movement. Looks like some of the reports are even slightly conservative. The first report I will refer to had predicted when we are in the month of uh, February, predicted that by December zinc would touch three thousand uh, dollars per ton. But if I follow last twenty thirty days of movement of price, looks like we will breach that mark of three thousand much earlier than December. Maybe somewhere closer to August or September, we will breach the mark of 3,000. By December, I am very hopeful that we will be closer to the mark of 3,200 or so. So, sir, so, uh, I mean, uh, are the under is the underlying demand favorable for such a price movement? Because uh, the recent uptick has been, uh, you know, uh, more on the uh, geopolitical or external factors. But uh, what uh, are we looking at a favorable underlying demand here as well? So apart from the underlying demand, uh, you should also know that the uh, TCRC is also growing at the lowest. Uh, currently, we, what we read in the media, 
tax resources in Korea are being entered into TCRC of $165 and current export is going $75 which clearly indicates that a concentrated market is in a quite tight supply. Because of the higher cost, many of the smaller mines have got closed. So concentrated market is in a shortage and that's how you can see it is impacting on the overall supply demand situation where the MIC is shortage and the prices are going up. So you are right, the current supply chain issue may also be, but fundamentally what Mr. Mishra has said, sooner than uh, around in December, he, we can see around $3,000. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We have no further questions, ladies and gentlemen. I would now like to hand the conference over to Ms. Jala Krastogi for closing comments. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. With this, we close today's earnings call. For any follow-up questions or clarifications on the results, please feel free to reach out to Investor Relations team. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Hindustan Zinc, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.